Okay, first item on the agenda is the closed session portion of the meeting. May I have a mover and seconder uh, to go into closed session under the authorities as printed in the agenda. Councillor Brand, Councillor Muir, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Okay, the time being 7 p.m., I'd like to call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the traditional territory acknowledgement followed by a moment of silence. Council of the Township of Red Rock hereby acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of the Robinson Superior Treaty and that the land we gather on is home to the Red Rock Indian Band, the Anishinaabek and Métis people. Administration advises that there are no additions to the agenda. If any members of council wish to make amendments to the agenda. Seeing none, can I have a mover and seconder for motion to approve the agenda as presented? Councillor Gladden, Councillor Smith, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Are there any declarations of interest to disclose? Seeing none. So tonight we have Staff Sergeant Dave Moskal from Nipigon OPP Detachment to present the 2022 fourth quarter and 2023 uh, first quarter reports. So go ahead. Yeah. So just. So when I'm red, I'm hot. Thank you. Makes sense, right? Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for missing our last meeting. Uh, I was so intent on getting things right for the Red Rock Fish Derby. Um, I totally slipped up on my scheduling. So that's on me and I apologize to you all. Um, having said that, that uh, Fish Derby was amazing. We got a great turnout and I think it was a big boom for the, boom for the uh, local economy. So uh, if you want to refer to your fourth quarter report from October to December of 2022, um, highlighted uh, one major thing stood out was that 700% increase on page five of your package, uh, the theft under. And uh, uh, when we were last together, I spoke of a fairly major project that we were working on about a three quarter of a million dollar um, recovery in the stolen property from Tim and Tim, Timmins to Edmonton. Uh, there were some people here that were playing a major role in that. So that would have got caught up in clearing those um, those occurrences. So those would have uh, uh, those would have rolled into those uh, those stats there. I'm happy to see the uh, drop in all the other uh, critical areas uh, or most of the critical areas. I'm sorry. Um, So are there any questions on that piece of the report? Any members of the council have any questions on the fourth quarter? No, go ahead. Great, so again, our commitment to traffic enforcement, the right uh, patrol hours, uh, we, we, are, we are fairly, we are dedicated my officers are there, dedicated to traffic enforcement and traffic safety. So you should see some fairly consistent numbers there. Uh, I hope you're seeing our officers in the community and maintaining their presence. We're doing a lot of work of trying to maintain and keep the relationships in the schools um, going in this cluster. And uh, the high school is uh, certainly a piece of that. Uh, we had an opportunity to do some training um, earlier this year, and that training was around um, uh, immediate rapid deployment, uh, school shootings that you see on the news. We have trained for those for the last 20 years. So the best way for us to get some real training is in is to get into the facilities ourselves. So I, I've made it a, a, a priority for every officer to get into the schools in their area and not only to make those contacts with staff, students, and uh, form those relationships, but from a tactical point of view, to be able to look at a building, know your, the buildings in your area, 
know where you could get into them in a, in a, in a bad situation to make sure that we are, we are doing what we are paid to do in that situation. So some of the, please turn off American news uh, when you're looking at those, because the training here is completely different than what you're seeing on, on some of the situations that happen south of the border. Um, some good, some not so good. So uh, we've tried to stay ahead of the curve. We've been doing this training for over 20 years. Um, so uh, again, it's that opportunity to put boots on the ground and really look at the facilities that are in our cluster. Um, did you want to deal with that report or were you going to accept them both, Madam Chair, on, on one, one fell swoop? I didn't know if you wanted to accept that report before I moved on to this one. I'm, we're going to accept both of them at the same time. Okay, thank you. So moving to the first quarter of January to March of 2023, um, a couple little uh, a couple little variances here that uh, that I want to wanted to address. That 300% looks awful uh, when you're looking at stats on the property crime side, but it's actually three frauds that uh, that were responsible for that uh, for that number to go up, and then on the assaults. Uh, there were three of those. Now, two of those assaults were historical in nature, which means they didn't necessarily happen in this time period, but when they're reported to us and they're historical, they're being captured in this period of time. So those assaults may have happened months and in some cases uh, years ago. Uh, on one of the historical uh, ones, the, the suspect was released on conditions. Um, Another one the, uh, was another historical uh, assault that the, uh, the individual um, refused to move forward with any kind of um, charges. And uh, the other one is uh, uh, one that was uh, released on a condition not to reside in the town of Red Rock. So that should come off your stats and will probably come on to my Nipigon stats because they are currently residing in Nipigon. So. <laughs> It's uh, sometimes a little bit of a shell game, uh, not on our part, but on, on the courts and where they decide people should live. Um, having said that, uh, the only other uh, item I want to point out, I'm sorry, on page three of that package is the frauds. And uh, of those frauds, uh, one was the attempt to purchase uh, something online. Uh, the second one was a attempt for one of those fraudulent phone calls. So we still log it in as a fraud, even though it was unsuccessful, we still log in the call as what the call is. So you'll, you'll see that. Um, and then the third one, I believe was a legitimate fraud, if I can say that. Um, I just wanna make sure I'm not leading you down the wrong road here. Basically, we, uh, we need to keep communicating, especially with our seniors, that they need to, the message isn't so much the fraud, it's the communication. And if a senior in your life or someone who is vulnerable, uh, whether it be to um, the onset of dementia or, or, or something where they could be vulnerable, that take away the sense of urgency, hang up the phone and call someone that they love and trust. Because the, the biggest piece of the frauds that we're getting and the phone frauds are not so much the fraud itself because we, every time we, there's the grandmother fraud and there's a CRA fraud. And, and every time we get communication out on the particular one, they're going to change. But what, what you wanna do is you wanna enhance the communication so that people are not embarrassed to call you. And, and that's, and that's the, the biggest piece of that is make sure that anyone vulnerable in your life has that safety net and that ability to call someone they trust. So if we can share that with our senior members of our community and, and, and the community as a whole, but it seems that our senior uh, members of the community at times are being taken advantage of in that area. So, um, and that's all I have on that that piece of that report. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain those. Would you happen to have any online resources that we can share through the township? With well, fraud or 
Yeah, there's the the Canadian frauds. There's the Canadian fraud center with the one eight hundred number, and and uh, we have some various uh, pieces like that. We've been sending officers to senior uh, meetings and senior clubs, and just trying to share that that communication. So, if you have an event where you would like one of our officers to attend, I would certainly assign someone to come up and to attend. Um, and it's just that positive messaging around have that someone in your life you can call. And if you don't have that someone in your life that you can call, hang up your phone and call us. Because I'll, I'll gladly send an officer. Uh, if we can prevent a fraud and, and prevent someone from losing their life savings, that's certainly better than us taking a report about it. So we're more than happy to step in. For sure. Councillor Smith? When you do that training or, or speak to the, the telephone fraud, do you also speak to the other side of the, the vishing or, or phishing um, portion of it of, of how to identify them as well? Or you just tell them, you know, when in doubt, call somebody? Um, I th the message that we try to get across, if it's not normal, then you need to, you need to stop the process, whatever that process is. And that, yeah, that can be through computer, that can be through... So most people have 10 or maybe 15 people that they communicate on a regular basis. They might have uh, a number of, of uh, online transactions that they do, whether that to be to pay bills. They may have certain people in their life that they're, in, that they're going to email, but almost every time, every time we, we encounter one of these things, the person knows that, oh, something wasn't right with that, but they still went ahead and did it, right? So it, it's more of that, that piece of, uh, of, of awareness and situational awareness to make sure that anything that seems uh, abnormal uh, in your general routine, then, then you need to pump the brakes and you need to, and you need to stop and really understand what's happening uh, rather than being manipulated into something happening. I think they're probably more successful too, because if you're not very good on computers or anything like that, you're just going to believe what you see, right? Councillor Mayor? Is there uh, any education on that automated voice, you know, voice, fake voice where, hey, hey mom, it's me, you know, where they get the recording? Oh yeah, well that, that's... How, um, do you have any statistics on the rise of that in the, for the province? Or? Uh, I don't have any statistics on it, uh, but again, when that came out, as soon as the word got out, we're seeing less of those ones, right? And then it, it tripped over to the CRA one. And then the CRA one ran its course. And then um, uh, the next one is the bank, the bank actually calling to say, we think we've had some, we think we've had some problems on your account. Can you give us your account number and password kind of thing? So there's been the various incarnations of, of that one. I, I mean, the, the fraud center could probably provide those, uh, provide those uh, details, but uh, we try to locally here, we've been fairly lucky. We've, there's been a number of people hit in the past, but again, we've, every meeting that I go to like this, I just keep trying to get that message out, find vulnerable people in your community and get them that Give them that safety, that just that safety net, right? Councillor Gladden. Yeah, I know that the library has had senior connections, and that would probably, I don't know if they've touched that yet, but that's something that the library should look into. I'm sure they would call you and uh, arrange for something probably in the fall. Absolutely. We will come to speak to any community group anytime, anywhere. In, in this cluster, just say the word, get a hold of me, and I'll make sure it happens. It's it's very important that we keep uh, delivering that message, and it has to be a constant delivery because uh, we're all getting older. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to have new people that are are going to be, you know, into that into that uh, time where maybe they're not as sharp as they once were, and and uh, we need to keep delivering that message. So that's going to be a constant. Any other questions or comments on his report? So I have a couple questions to ask you after we pass the report, if you don't mind. Okay, may I have a mover and seconder for a motion to accept the 2022 fourth quarter and 2020, 
2022 fourth quarter and 2023 first quarter reports from the Nipkin OPP. Councilor Brand, Councilor Smith, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. So uh, we have two things that have come up recently. Uh, the first one I'll speak to was just probably last week. We received a complaint from a community member uh, towards the township. Uh, OPP were notified and so was the MTO about a, a large load going over our bridge. Um, I'm not sure if you can speak to that, but if you have any information from the OPP, they can provide us. Uh, our office was advised of that uh, call. Uh, I assigned Sergeant Mitch Brennan to that call to, to look into uh, what the issue was, look into follow up with the um, with the company and to find out what happened. What we did, uh, what we have to point out, of course, is that bridge is no longer, that's not a provincial highway. At that point, the highway ends just before that bridge. So that's um, a town council decision um, on on whether or not they're going to provide an exception to use that bridge. So as it happened that that, that company was uh, contracted to come and do work for, I'm not sure if it was the township or the marina or voters in the marina. It was for, yeah, private owners. Of private the owners. Homes, yeah. um, so what had happened was the regular crane that they use broke down. And if you're on your way to Terrace Bay, you can see that crane sitting on the side of the road in the snowplow turnaround that actually blew an engine on it. So they were unable to fulfill that contract without the use of that heavier piece of equipment. Uh, Sergeant Brennan followed up with the township afterwards uh, to, to see, you know, kind of what the circumstances are. Um, the owner admitted that they should have got prior permission from the township to use the heavier machine, but they were trying to, uh, they were trying to fulfill the obligations of that contract. Now, I'm not sure of the conversation that happened between Sergeant Brennan and who he spoke to in the township, but the township, uh, I believe, and I'm not going to try to speak for the township, um, allowed it on uh, as a one off because they felt that they needed to allow those people to get their vessels in the water. So that's pretty much the position that we have. Okay, thank you for that. And also, uh, Councillor Smith at the last meeting had brought up that um, we seem to have an issue, but it, I, I don't know, it's not all year long, but we do have some residents that speed. We, our speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour in the township. So um, is there areas that we can work on or what? how do we, how do we go about? So I sent that, uh, I sent that uh, concern out to the shift sergeants. I asked them for uh, directed patrols in, in the town to see if we can uh, uh, deliver that message. And I believe if you look on your report, it'll show a number of e-tickets um, e that were issued. So sorry, I didn't, uh, I didn't actually uh, tab it because I wasn't expecting that question. Uh, and we set up several, you'll notice there, there were several rides set up, um, probably more than normal, to try and get a presence back in the town. Um, again, we're going to continue um, number of traffic complaints. We're going to continue to uh, step up enforcement. Um, I think uh, I find those uh, I find those signs effective, those those um, digital signs, if you have a specific uh, problem area, but they are quite expensive. So at this point, in order to help you, um, I will continue to have the sergeant shift brief uh, speeding issues in the town and try and get uh, try and get a better presence uh, to alleviate that. And and basically, um, we need to. If it's a concern, we need. Uh, we certainly need to address it. We certainly need to hammer down on it. So we'll be doing that. Having said that, whenever this happens, uh, unfortunately, we we 
end up charging local residents who are very angry uh, because they they want that change, but because they're used to just traveling around around the uh, community, um, sometimes might be a little might be a little heavy. So so I just want to let you know that you may be getting some complaints as as the officers enforce that uh, speed limit. For sure, thank you for that. Any comments on what he's, he's provided us? No? Councillor Smith? No, I do appreciate the extra presence uh, and it's because I do live on White Boulevard, which is okay. <laughs> All right, so, uh, <laughs> and, and again, my original concern was, was not just the speeding, but then you see the people doing the cat box and they just kind of going crazy on that road uh, yeah. now with the nice weather. And that was just my concern. There's a lot of kids that cross that road. Yes. I have kids. Yes. Um, I don't want to see them hit. So yeah, no, I do appreciate that. Thank you. Councillor Muir. Yeah, absolutely. And just that comment on the, the definitely people might be upset, but at the end of the day, there's a ton of kids on that road. So they honestly can be upset all they want. They shouldn't be speeding down that yeah. road. There is a lot of kids there. So yeah. enjoy your ticket if you're speeding on that road. That's yeah. that's my stance on that because there's a lot of kids. So yeah, I'm I'm good with it. I just I just know when community safety zones first came out, I wrote the first ticket in Shunya and it was to a town councillor. Well, I, I did get a speeding ticket a few months ago on the highway and the customer service was fantastic from and, uh, and that's what I want to say so. <laughs> we shared that love with some Hells Angels today as they were traveling through. So. Well, thank you for your report and uh, thank you for providing us that information. Also, I believe you've been here for over a year, just over a year, yeah. and uh, you're doing a fantastic job. Lovely. You've had uh, some really wild um, incidents under your belt here and and we really appreciate everything that you guys do. Well, thank you very so much. Please pass it along. And if at any time, any of you, please feel free. Contact me anytime. Thank you. No, that's good. Okay, I didn't lose my slide. Hey, items 5.1. Uh, regular meeting, uh, June 5th. Are there any errors or omissions to note in the minutes? Okay, seeing none, may I have a mover and seconder for motion to approve the minutes at item 5.1. Councilor Mayor, Councilor Gladden, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Okay, the minutes of the last special meeting, June 14th, are at items 5.2 on the agenda. Any errors or omissions to note in the minutes? Okay, seeing none, is, um, I have a mover and seconder for motion to approve the minutes at items 5.2. Councillor Mayor, Councillor Smith. All in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. A hey, correspondence, information purposes only regarding the DSAB 2022 financial statements. They can be found at the link in the document. I don't know if anyone checked it out. Yeah. <laughs> Do any members of council have any remarks on this item? Seeing none, okay. Next item 6.2 is for discussion purposes regarding a letter from the uh, Red Rock Indian Band regarding sponsorship for the 31st annual uh, powwow. Do any members of council have any remarks on this item? Councillor Muir? Yeah, I believe we made a donation last year, so I wouldn't mind matching what we donated last year, which I can't remember what it was. I believe we stayed consistent with our, our donations of 250, so. so. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh, sorry. Yes, it, it was 250. And uh, and the reason we didn't share the large document and said to hit the link was because it was a very large document on the, on the previous one. So, okay. Is there a mover and seconder for motion to approve a donation to the Red Rock Indian Band's 31st powwow in the amount of $250? Is there a mover? Councillor Gladden. 
All in favor? Did you have a question? Okay. Motion's carried. Thank you. Item 6.3 is for discussion purposes relating to the 2023 award ceremony for the Chamber of Commerce. Do members of council have any remarks or comments on this item? Uh, we haven't had one of these in a very long time, I think. Maybe Mark, you can give us an update. Yeah, I can uh, provide a little bit of a summary. It, it hasn't been active for a while. It's it's in the process of, of trying to be reduced. Uh, re-established. Um, you can see on, on page one that the Township of Red Rock was presented a milestone award for 70 years. Um, I, I don't, I, I wish I had a lot more information for you on it, but it, it, the information hasn't flowed that frequently to me, um, to be totally honest. Um, but in saying that, there is a planned awards evening um where where the township uh would be invited we are a paid member of of the chamber um and so you'll see that the uh the the scheduled event is september 14th of 2023 um why there's a resolution um associated with this is is for the uh the request for a donation so um the best way it was explained to me is any donation would would help but um, there is two major ways to donate one is is being a sponsor and you can see that the, that you could be a gold silver and or bronze sponsor and and or you could sponsor what they call special awards that you see at the back with the nomination criteria and those awards are i believe priced at sixty dollars per um per award so um, as you can see, for example, I mean, if you, you know, if you did the math on that, you're, you're looking at, you know, whatever you wanted to do based on the $60 fee in that, in that manner. So the Chamber of Commerce is trying to get going again. Um, the Township of Red Rock was awarded the milestone, or is being awarded a milestone award for 70 years, and, uh, and they are looking for for donations from the township for their event. Any comments, uh, Councillor Smith? Have we ever donated in the past? Do we normally uh, sponsor most events? Uh, I know before for like other events, we do it uh, uh, kind of a donation in kind, but uh, does this meet our criteria for the norm? We have with uh, the Red Rock Legion. Um, we've co you know, um, co-sponsored those a few events. Um, it's just that this hasn't been run for a long time. That's why, right? But yeah, I don't I know. Mean, the, I'm not sure the last time it it was ran. Um, and I I found the the document uh, with with the secondary um, nominations. And so, for example, I mean, they've got obviously examples. If you did three awards, one hundred and eighty dollars, kind of thing, right? So. You know, five awards, three hundred. So it's, yeah, it's. I, I guess it would fit a criteria if if it was was the will of council. I mean, it is, it is the local chamber of commerce. Well, my thinking is, if we wanted to nominate some of our businesses, then we we should be participating in this. Is what. Well, and that's is how I feel, and I'm I'm fine with bronze, um, with the bronze sponsorship. So. And that's the other piece of it for sure. If if you had you know thoughts on nominations, uh, you can just forward them to the office, and uh, um, you can see the criteria on on the back page. Obviously, business of the year, for example, you know tourism award, trailblazer award. So, you know, as a council, you could uh, you could make those uh, those nominations as well through our office. And I'm not sure if you know, but this. Um... The nominations, like the form, is that just like is that going to be made public to people, or who who's, who does this go to? Who does the nomination form go to? Yeah, like is it just? You know, um, to be honest, I believe it is made public. Yeah, um, and and maybe maybe Ashley could speak to that. Sure, she may have a little bit more information. So the way um, the chamber has worked in the past, I believe the last dinner was in 2019. 
um, held in Nipigon 2018 or 2019. Um, having attended these events in the past um, and also being on the review committee, um, the nominations are made public. So the forms themselves are not. Um, the nominees go to a review panel who then review the, um, the nomination forms for each category. So there's a select number of, I guess, kind of judges for each award who go through all of the candidates for that specific award. And the nomination list is made public. Um, each of those nominees is informed that you've been nominated for such and such award. You're invited to the dinner. Um, and then the evening of the 14th, um, the winners are announced. Councillor Smith. So then is who is allowed to nominate then I think is what I'm still not 100% clear on if it's not. Anybody can nominate anybody. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. As long as they meet the criteria as noted. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Hey, is there a mover and seconder for a motion to approve a don donation to the top of Lake Superior Chamber of Commerce awards ceremony in the amount of, I'm going to say 250, the bronze, that's bronze, right? Bronze sponsorship. Uh, Councillor Gladden. Councillor Smith, all in favor? Against? Oh, okay. Missed it. Thank you. Motion's carried. Okay, next item at 6.4 information purposes only regarding. Uh, regarding uh, public notice for the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, meeting on June 29th. Do any members of council have any remarks on the item? Seeing none. Next item, 7.1, are the minutes from the Red Dark Public Library meeting on May 9th. Do any members of the council have any questions? Okay, seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the minutes? Also Brand, Councilor Gladden, all in favor? Motion's carried. Item 8.1 is a report from the Director of Operations. Hey, do any members of council have questions on his report? Councillor Muir? Yeah, yeah, just a couple there, Blair. Yep. Uh, just uh, with regard to the, the contractor noting the recreation roof, um, do, we, do we have an engineering assessment? Has JML looked at that roof? No. No. Uh, we, if we pursue that in the future, we will have to get an engineering report on the roof. Okay, so there, there's there, but I like the one thing I'm the improper installation. That thing's 12, 12 years old, 13, 14. I believe the contractor was wrapping that project up when I started working for the town in 2007. 2007, okay. Sometimes lowest bidder is not always the best day. <laughs> um, so the other thing too is the replacement of the damaged uh, on section seven, the replacement of the damaged fire hydrant. Is that was that just how was that damaged? From ice. Ice, so, ice yeah. damage froze yeah. up down. The barrels cracked on it, I believe. Okay, I just had a couple of more notes here. Sorry. Um, the one thing too about the, the summer students are, how many summer students do we have now? I and just have two in my department. You have the two now? Okay, gotcha. And then the last question, this is it. When we uh, launch boats, there's a charge for that? There, it's just set fee and the set rate, say? It's just a flat rate. Yeah. Flat rate now? Okay. And it's expected that we use one employee, usually with the creator. Gotcha. And back. Gotcha. And the kudos on the uh, kudos on the uh, safety hub. That's a good program. Yeah. Any other questions or comments on 
There's a point. Okay, seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the report? Councillor Smith, Councillor your name, Councillor Gladden. All in favor? All hands rising, motion's carried. Thanks, Blair. Next item 8.2 is from the community development officer. Do any members of council have questions of Ms. Davis? Councilor Brand. So um, regarding the Memorial Banner Program, is that going to be a go forward process? Um, so you'll see in um, the direction discussion, uh, item number two is regarding the Memorial Banner Program. So there is a decision that council will have to make tonight regarding that program. Do the report and then do the resolutions or how would you like to tackle it? We'll take any questions or comments now on the report and then we'll go through the resolutions. Councillor Muir. Yeah, just uh, good good work on the Paiute Mountain Run. Unfortunately, I wish I would have had more notice. I would have ran it this year. Um, so <laughs> that's just it's not going to happen. But um, so as far as the webinars go, various funding streams, how how's it looking out there for giving away money like for, you know, waterfront docks and skate parks and stuff. Are they are they giving lots of money away, smash with turf, things like that? So something that we have to be aware of is a lot of these funding programs require a minimum of a 30% contribution from the township. So with all of the active projects we have um, going on right now and within the next couple of years, that's something that we kind of have to keep an eye on fiscally is we have to demonstrate that we can handle the projects that we have going on plus also our contribution for upcoming projects. So the, the way the funding sometimes works is you have projects that are kind of ready to go in the back burner when the funding becomes available, you apply for it. So um, right now there's kind of a wish, I have a wish list that has been brought to my attention um, that I kind of prepare for typically as an example, a funding stream will open in um, like June for a start date in November. Right. Often how funding works, you don't often hear that you've been approved until October, November. So there is a little bit of a, a start date delay. Right. So but we will we'll be notified if there's something like this, because at the same time too, yeah, like for a skate park, for example, they put a, a price on it, they'll give you a hundred and you got to put in 30. Yeah. Keep in mind too, right? They're they're like if there's something that's really desired that's brought to the table, like if something comes up, people might be more apt, and some businesses might say, "Hey, like yes. I'll, I'll give you five grand, we'll put in for this," you know. So there's so just so we're in the loop all the time because I mean we infrastructure for you know obviously families mm -hmm. is is huge to have. So. so there has been some early discussions uh, that came out of the strategic planning um, community consultations regarding a playground that is suitable for children under five, all ages senior sections, outdoor weight equipment. Um, that's a project that I've been reaching out to several organizations that have active community components. So like recreation components to their kind of corporate vision. Um, so those talks have happened. There is a funding stream, um, the Ontario capital funding stream um, is 100% funded up to $150,000. Um, but some of those conversations didn't take place in time for the deadline. So there was a shift to apply for the gymnasium floor that was originally part of the recreation center project, but was eliminated. Um, so that application went in for Trillium to fix the floor upstairs. Um, and then the next round, all of the documentations and partnerships agreements would be in place for the playground. Councillor Glenn. With regards to the um, rec center floor, the gymnasium floor, yes. is there anything in there? Do you know if there's asbestos with that flooring? Um, so that is a asbestos vinyl floor, uh, vinyl tile. Uh, after talking with the construction companies and engineering, they did do um, 
called a DSS report. I'm not exactly sure what it stands for, but it's basically an, an assessment of um, dangerous substances. It is a level one, so it can be removed and disposed of as with no concerns. Uh, the other option is to put the flooring right on top of it. Thank you. Councillor Smith. My question has nothing to do with the rec center. <laughs> Uh, Canada activities being planned and looked for volunteers. Um, do we have actual confirmed activities yes. or? Okay. So um, we'll skip to that. Uh, so Canada Day, um, confirmed activities so far, um, just as a tidbit, the program is planning to go out um, next week, or sorry, th this Thursday, I'm, or the 22nd, it will be in the mail. Um, so the Legion breakfast will be from 9 a.m. to 11. Um, the parade will start at 12 o'clock, starting from the Recreation Center parking lot on Baker Road. Um, if anybody wishes to decorate their bicycles, golf carts, ATVs, feel free to do so. There are prizes available for that, um, as well as for floats. So if anybody wants to decorate a float, we do have prizes available for floats. Um, for anyone decorating a bicycle or wagons or anything like that, feel free to show up just show up. But if you do have a float, I am requesting that you register so I can make sure that things are kind of, we have people in the right places. Um, we ha do have a couple who have confirmed already, uh, as well as other organ local organizations and service clubs who are participating in the parade. Uh, opening ceremonies will be at 1230 at the flagpole, um, close to the bandstand, the at that end of the boardwalk. Uh, we have kids family games and activities running from um, one to five. So there's bouncy castles, watermelon eating contest, fun run, hay hunt, um, and basically a family fun day type thing with uh, various games. Um, cake at five o'clock at the pavilion in the marina building. And the Dorian band is confirmed to play at the Legion for free from 8 p.m. to 12 p.m. So that has been funded through uh, Celebrate Canada. Um, I'm going to assume no fireworks due to a fire ban. That's correct. Okay. And similarly with uh, the barbecue, because it is a coal grill, um, that's also been identified as not permissible with the fire ban. So we will not be having a barbecue. Are you still actively looking for volunteers? Yes. Um, we about some activities are 15, 20 minutes, half an hour long. Um, if anybody would like to, there's a couple other activities that we could do based on volunteer numbers. Um, so I'd be happy to accept any more <laughs> applications for, or just kind of um, anybody wishing to volunteer for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, or an hour for the ships for the Bounty Castle. Okay, great. Have you had good turnout on the online surveys that you were looking for? Yes. Um, so our active transportation has received, I don't have final numbers, but our consultants say we have received some good uh, um, numbers. I um, was hoping this week to put the push out again. We do have until June 30th for the active transportation survey. So there are paper copies at the credit union and at the library and at the town office. Uh, it's also available online. And then the community uh, safety and well-being survey is at the library, the town office, as well as online. Um, the community safety and well-being survey um, will be closed on the 23rd, as that meeting is next week, the 28th and 29th. Okay, and now back to the memorial banners. It says you are looking for direction, so we're not passing anything tonight. You're looking just for direction on option one or two, or would you like us to say which one we want um i'd prefer if you could say which one you want but i can if you are not at that stage and there's an option you prefer i can research it further if you request more information no it's just i would have to write yeah. something up, that's all okay are we comfortable direction is with fine. a direction tonight well I, I was just curious wouldn't mark make this decision we just passed the budget so we go from this like is this not an operational decision or yeah, but people are paying for this. It's yes. Nice. Yeah, so the the tricky part to this one, yes, I guess, uh, I mean, the short answer, but um, what we're looking for is direction to have our staff administer the program more, right? Because that's really the direction we can, uh, um, because the Legion, 
doesn't have the the, the staff or the, the admin ability to handle it. So we would handle the project internally and 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 that would be a, a part we would take on. Um, but really the the direction on on the staffing, you're right, it's or on the costing is is recoverable, right? Yeah. I mean it's 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 basically basically recoverable. But uh yeah, it's just something that that we wanted to run by council just just as as that direction. Basically to help recover the cost of installation, um, whether we leave it as a lower rate or a higher rate or the township eats any additional costs associated with switching out the banners. I don't know if anybody wants to discuss it. I'm fine with option two. I mean, it's only $25 difference and most uh, families are going to, to go for this anyway, so, right? So operational, I mean, administrative <laughs> costs, that's yours. And then um, public works, putting the banners up and down. Once um, so it would be the hiring of um, someone similar to Jimmy Dampier with the, the lift to switch out the banners. So the cost would be to switch out the business ones um, around Thanksgiving and then switch them back to business ones in November. Councilor Brand. So normally the banners are switched by, not switched by town? They're not switched at all. So the business banners are typically up year round. Oh, I see. Um, the only thing I would uh, I had is that I you, you thought here that uh, you put the banners up in October and switch to November. I I just think with November being Remembrance Day, I would like to see it there for the entire month of November. Um, myself, I just think it's it's a, a small tribute to our our veterans. And I don't see why not leaving it on a little bit longer myself. But other than that, I, I am in agreement with either one or two. I just think the thinking behind that was like middle of October to middle of November. You yeah. still get the one month. It's on, the on, preparation leading up to right. um, remember today, just based yeah. off of what other communities have done um, as part of this program. And then the banners would come down the week following Remembrance Day. So a Remembrance Day is on a Saturday this year. So they could be up until like the 17th, the, the Friday after. Also whether it's depending to put the lift in. So direction is to move forward with this. Uh, if you want, we'll come back with that next council or I can write up a resolution now to pick an option. Well, I, I would suggest option two. Um, that that makes the most sense, right? And and uh, and, and the more the direction was 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 just based on on like we said that the fact that we're going to administer the program so through through the legion on basically as as an assistance through the program right so our staff would handle that work and then but option two I mean at, at that point um, would be would be the direction if if that's approved if if that direction's here that's where we would be, that's where we would we would land. Do we need a resolution then for it or no just direction okay. Everyone's in favor with option two. It'll be it'll the resolution will be covered okay. through uh, the discussion direction and then uh, Ashley's report. So. I do have some additional updates from other items in my summary activity. Um, so we did have our site visit for the recreation center. We had eight companies um, and one potential subcontractor. Uh, so apparently that's a really high turnout, especially for being outside of Thunder Bay. So that was awesome. Um, the um there were, is a resolution that is going to have to be made um preferably the first week of july the tender does close the 27th of june uh, so we'll be reviewing that with the engineering firm and bringing forth a uh, letter of recommendation to uh, council so we're hoping for a special meeting the first week of july to award that tender so they can start around by the 17th of july to be on site setting up. Um, the NOHFC rural enhancement stream, so the ice plant that has gone ahead, work is starting July 4th. So Simcoe will be on site to uh, repair the ice plant. Uh, they'll be here for the 4th to the 14th. Um, 
And then the Paiute Mountain Run, um, that is moving ahead. We do have a couple sponsors that have been confirmed. Um, there will be t-shirts for sale uh, to the public for anybody wishing to purchase a 40th anniversary uh, Paiute Mountain Run t-shirt. Um, and I am looking for volunteers for the Paiute Mountain Run as well to sit at the tables along the route as well as at the finishing line. So it does take about 25 volunteers to run that uh, event every year. And the other question, I believe every year the Recreation Center has been open to provide shower facilities for the runners afterwards, uh, as the finish line is at the tennis court. So that's something that um, we're requesting as well. We don't foresee any problems with the construction that's going on there. They would be, okay. Uh, we're not using this facility. That is the weekend of the Folk Festival. The Paiute Mountain Run always takes place on the Saturday of the Folk Festivals. Um, quite a few of the runners are not necessarily attendees of the Folk Festival, so we would have to come up with some form of identification to let them access the grounds and get to the building to have a shower. Um, so I believe that's why the Recreation Center had been used in the past, so they don't have to cross that line into the Folk Festival grounds. Okay, any other questions on her report? Okay, seeing none, is there a mover and second or promotion to receive the report? Yep, next, read it. Yep, that's okay. Councillor Smith, Councillor Brand, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Okay, is there a mover and seconder for motion to authorize a stage two application for approximately $87,702.25 to the NOHFC Community Enhancement Program Rural Enhancement Stream for the Arena Ice Plant upgrades? And further, that commitment from the township to contribute its share of the project cost approximately $9,744.69 and cover any project cost overruns. Councillor Gladden, Councillor Smith, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Thank you, Ashley. Next item 8.3 is a report on ad administrative activities. Do any members of council have questions on his report before he gives a verbal update? Okay. They want the update. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and Ashley may be able to help me out more on this one as well. But uh, so the, the first one on, on the general update discussion, uh, the Norval Morrisville Monument location. So again, um, Superior Country um, wanted uh, through the township was going to erect that. Uh, um, they had done, uh, they did a presentation to us a while back. Um, we did walk the, the path um, and select what we think um, is a good location. Um, Ashley may be able to explain that location better than I can, but uh, the recommendation is that we use this location. So Ashley, if you just wanted to speak to that location. Sure, so just along the boardwalk by the pavilion, there's a grassy kind of outcropping that goes towards the lake at one point when it was uh, the boardwalk was initially developed there was a great big garden there um there off to the right hand side uh there's of that green space on the lake side there um it's kind of a section that if you're standing there you're looking directly at a tree um so the thunderbird would be backed by the tree but if you look over uh to the left of the thunderbird you would see where the pictographs would be as well as the canoe that shows up on the cliff face. So um, that's kind of our, our reasoning for that location. Um, Suzanne and Dan from Superior Country, Mark and Blair and myself um, figured that was uh, the best location. So you can still get a view of the, everyone else. Viewers, visitors uh, can still have a direct view of the lake um, and the Thunderbird would be back by uh, the great big tree that's there. Sounds great, thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Um, the Spirit North EMS has has rescheduled a date, so that date is July fifth. Um, that's an engagement session. It will be held in Nipigon at the community center, um, one o'clock.
to 3.30. So, um, and of course, any member of council that can make it uh, that day is, uh, is, is invited to that. So that'll, uh, that'll take place then. Um, I did uh, want to um, thank um, Braden Plemmel for his time with the township in the, uh, in the uh, recreation intern role. Uh, Braden has accepted a position, um, another position outside of the township and has, has put his resignation. His last day will be this upcoming Friday. Um, and I believe uh, Braden has plans of attending college uh, in the fall. So uh, it was definitely a pleasure to meet uh, and, and get to know Braden. And uh, and uh, he did, uh, you know, he he did good work for the township. And uh, I wish him all the best. So Braden will be done on Friday. Um, delegations have been submitted for the AMO conference. So um, at the direction of council, those uh, those have all been in, uh, submitted and, and entered by the deadline uh, um, that was posted. Um, we usually don't hear much now for a bit, but uh, um, we will, uh, once I do get notification of what delegations we actually did, uh, did and were successful, um, in obtaining, I will let you know. Um, of course, we uh, it was the Ministry of Transportation, Municipal Affairs and Housing, Infrastructure, Northern Development. Um, you know, just as directed by Council, with uh, with a lot of our hot topics that that we we call, for example, including uh, um, the bridge, for example, um, Highway Six Twenty Eight coming into the community, and uh, and just some general financial uh, and uh, and impact questions based around uh, municipal affairs. So I will keep you informed as to uh, what we what we are successful in getting. Um, the audit presentation. So July seventeenth, it is scheduled. So uh, BDO has uh, asked me for a committed date. Um, I did. I did commit to the July 17th meeting of council. Um, they, they could come earlier if it was the direction of council, but they were looking for a commitment uh, and, and that met, uh, the, the, uh, met the, their scheduling. It, it happens to be our next meeting of council. So they would be a delegation at that. Um, we'll schedule internal meetings with, with BDO prior to that to go over documents and, uh, and, and, uh, and the management letter and hopefully have all that ready for council as well too. Uh, so that is scheduled for our next upcoming meeting. Um, White Boulevard, um, I know David uh, Moskal addressed some of that today. Um, I, I had spoke to him um, about having a a closer look on there. He also talked about signage and, and things like that. So there's certain things we can do and, and there's other things we can't. Obviously, uh, we don't have the authority to post uh, varying and, and what we want as a speed limit, but we could erect signs if that, uh, and they are looking into some some help and some assistance with, uh, with getting me the proper signage and or and or keeping a, a monitor on that as well as the, the whole community for speeding. Um, and just to follow up on the weight room um, relocation, I, I, I wanted to stay uh, with a with a recommendation or or at least a discussion here. Um, I am continuing to look at the the costing based around uh, flooring um, and square footage. We we did a, a general square footage of the facility uh, last week. Um, it's it is something that that we will have as a recommendation to council quite quite soon. There is one bit of a hiccup with, uh, with the summer scheduling of this, because with our, with our tender, we do have to provide kind of a office space type of uh, location for the contractor as part of our tender. And we were planning on, on using that location for that. So um, it would be something that if that was the direction of council, we could, we could work at quite quickly, but we, we were using that location based on that. So if, if we had a time frame of, you know, uh, throughout the summer using that so uh and what we'd be generally looking at is obviously moving the uh, security equipment and making an accessible door at uh, uh for the gym as well as flooring and assessing the electrical so um we're working on that we we've got a couple of thoughts i, I had mentioned um kind of some other thoughts um, about allowing us access on our current system as temporary Unfortunately, we looked into that a little further to meet accessibility standards. It, it won't be anything we can do, 
but uh, we could always look at uh, a summer porta potty as well, uh, just to get us through if that was, uh, and and we can uh, we can certainly look at that because um, you know it is a it is a fact that when when the facilities close that we don't we're not able to provide those those uh, amenities, so we're looking into that as well. Councilor Mayor. Yeah, I guess that's one thing that we do have to look at. So the accessibility, I, I, so from the, the top tier of that uh, space to the bottom tier of that space, is it, do we require a lift in the gym? Because it's a public facility. So compliance standards under the regulations, do we require a lift to get from down those three stairs? That's something that should be looked into as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We have to. I, I I looked at the compliance piece on on the original, but uh, that that is a good point. We can uh, we can certainly look at that as well because there is an elevation difference there, as well, for sure. And um, but that's that's a good uh, a good discussion piece for sure. Um. Our 2023 bridge inspections are complete, so we do have uh, five bridges that. Uh, we do monitor or uh, we do have to monitor um, biannually for the township of Red Rock. Uh, we received the actual copies uh, late last week. I believe it was Thursday afternoon. Um, haven't had a chance to fully review them yet, but once we do that um, in, the, in the very near future, what we will do is uh, share that with council and then make those reports uh, public documents. Um, at the at, at the will and the direction of council, um, we we could certainly bring our engineering firm in to speak to those uh, that report as well. Um, and I and I suggest that might be something that we want to do um, because that is that is that is where you know the knowledge is in in those documents. So um, I will have that information uh, out very shortly to uh, to council. We'll then bring it to a to a council table and uh, and it'll become a public document at that time. Um, just to speak just just briefly on on Sergeant Moscow's uh, report on the bridge. Um, um, I was dealing with that issue with uh, with Constable uh, Brennan. Um, we we were aware uh, and there was some confusion in in the in the reports there, but we were aware of 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 the crane that was coming across and we made that decision that decision was made by by myself along with the director of operations our director of operations made the decision reported it to uh, to me and um but we were aware that uh, that we did have uh, have equipment coming in and um we uh, we made that decision based on the fact that we we need to perform duties within the township of red rock and and that's a decision that we 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 made and if if it happened again, um, we don't make a habit of that. But uh, if you look at a a situation, uh, just hypothetically speaking, um, and you had say a transport coming one direction on that bridge, and a vehicle heading in the opposite direction at the same time, I mean, how do you control that, right? Um, we if we lived in a perfect world with lots of money, um, we'd address the situation. Uh, but we continue to monitor it, and we do the best way, best we can, with uh, with uh, with the limitations that we have. So, um, Red Rock Fish and Game Club, uh, it's it's just a just a brief discussion I wanted to have with council again for direction. Um, I've I've spoke with members of the Red Rock Fish and Game Club. We have a a really outdated lease agreement uh, with <laughs> with the Red Rock Fish and Game Club. It goes back to uh, to nineteen, I believe it is eighty seven. Uh, with Domtar Incorporated, so it's just kind of a cleanup piece um, from from a liability standpoint as well. Um, the township is now the owner. The township owns that property, um, so uh, we we've had very brief initial discussions, and uh, and we're going to continue. And we we've decided that uh, uh, between the Fish and Game Club and and myself, and then direction of council, that we would. Uh, we would hopefully be able to work towards a new lease that would that would at least uh, get us all on the right page, get us all moving uh, in the right direction, and uh, be compliant. Um, so that's that. And the last one is just a follow up. And I know uh, Councillor uh, Gladden had brought this up earlier, and uh, and we didn't we didn't forget about it. We didn't want to go without 
Uh, and it was just just a general discussion based back on on the the, the brief report on Red Rock Day. It's it's uh, it was brought to us by a citizen. Um, it would be June 28th, which is coming, and it I guess references the six and the 28th. Did we uh, we never really did set a direction there? I, I know did we want to did we want to at least at minimum um, make some kind of a a designation to that day, or is it just something that uh, that at this point we we didn't want just we just didn't want to let it go uh, prior to prior to next week. Councillor Glad. Yeah, no, I just uh, actually the citizen did approach me again today, just wondering if there had been any follow up on that. Um, I, I it's, and then I looked at the agenda and lo and behold, it was there. But um, it's it was totally up to council. I, I just thought it was kind of a neat idea, um, but it, totally up to council. Yeah, and we're not recommending a lot, obviously, at this point. But if it was if it was the direction of council. Um, Certainly, we could do something where where that was uh, at least acknowledged, and or um, and or I guess at this point we could move right along. It just did, like I said, we we thought we'd bring it back. So it's because that date is because June is six, and then twenty eighth of the month, so Highway six twenty eight into Red Rock, so Red Rock Day. So obviously, uh, we have we can't really host anything because July first we really don't have many volunteers for that. So maybe just the designation. I don't know how people feel about that. Just Councillor Mayor. Yeah, a designation, free parking for the day, you know, things like that. Now we could, like I said, we could keep it very simple or we could we could let it go. Um, again, it's 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 just something we we thought we'd bring back one more time. I, I don't know about the rest of council, but I think this year, um, I mean, it kind of was a little bit late now for us to try and figure something out. So maybe we can, yep. you know, move forward and look look uh, at doing something next year. Yep, excellent. So that's the direction then, okay. All right, perfect. And that's all I had on my report. Um, other, uh, other than just a, a shout out to the township of Red Rock and this beautiful facility, we did uh, host Thunder Bay District Municipal League this Saturday. Um, was very well attended, and uh, the feedback's been been fantastic from people that. Uh, said wow what a what a beautiful facility and what a beautiful marina so we did have representatives from 17 different communities across uh across our area that uh, represent thunder bay district uh, municipal league and uh yeah it went very well and was well attended any other questions or comments on uh, his verbal report councilor brand I'm sorry, on what? No, I, I, I didn't have anything to say on Braden's other than if there was questions. Um, Councilor Brand. Just a quick question. Um, I just wondered if, if in uh, any of this programming, if um, there was any consideration of having the Bouncy Council available to St. Haley's for end of day celebrations. I know the Red Rock Indian Band does that over in Michigan. We thought about that at all, or is there an issue of liability? St. Like Hillary School would have to approach the township to rent them, as the high school has done that uh, this year already with renting our games and stuff. Okay. So they have to approach the township. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Okay, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the report? Councillor Muir, Councillor Smith. All in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Are we going back into closed session? Yes. Okay. okay, time being 810. Uh, we will be going back into closed sessions under the original 
uh, item, under items 1.1. 1 .1. Can I have a mover and seconder? Councilor Muir, Councilor Gladden, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. So I did forget to say this after the first closed session. So council approved the closed session minutes from the June 5th meeting of council and discussed personal matters and acquisitions or dispositions of land in closed session, which uh, was followed up with the second closed session, which uh, closed at 840. Next item is a bylaw to confirm proceedings at council. Can I have a mover and seconder for motion to pass the bylaw? Councillor Muir, Councillor Gladden, all in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. As we're moving to the summer schedule, uh, there won't be a meeting on the first uh, Monday of the month. It is July 17th. Okay, uh, time being 8.42, no further business to attend to. The meeting is adjourned.